Well, welcome back to Workshop Friend. Last episode, we took time out to make this uh, DTI holder, and I'm going to use it today in uh, my project, which is to continue the work on this MyFood Large Fixed Steady. So today we're going to be working on this hinge, and it's actually quite important because I want to ensure repeatability. So after opening and closing again I want to be able to maintain the setting and uh, to do that we need a nice close fitting bolt which provides good radio location and also stops these from separating. So the design calls for a threaded hole in here and then a nice close fitting hole here on the bolt with a counter bore and a nice large head on the bolt to clamp all this together. So we're going to go over to the drill and we're going to um, open this out and tap it. The bolt requires a 3 8 UNC thread and it's particularly important that the thread is square with the work. So without disturbing any of the settings I'm using the taper tap in the drill chuck, getting it to good depth of engagement by hand and then transferring to a tap wrench. And this hole is going to be opened out and then reamed half an inch. The other half of the fixed steady is now on the table. And I'm carefully opening up the holes ready for reaming half inch. Unfortunately, I didn't run the camera for the reaming, but uh, that was a very straightforward operation. So, so we're going to take this over to the, the mill and we're going to locate on the half inch reamed hole and counterbore this for the head of the bolt. So this is the first opportunity to use the DTI holder and uh, the first issue I've come up with is I have to remove one of the strap clamps so you have to leave space around uh, the center of the axis here to get this to operate. Um, anyway, I've done that and we can now Attach this. So once I've uh, undone the table locks, it's time to adjust the X and Y axes until we get zero on the DTI as I rotate it by hand. If you want to see more details on construction of this DTI holder, then there's a link here. So I've made this cutter from a broken end mill, and uh, that should enable us to get in there and counterbore the hole. It's going to be three quarter inch diameter. This is square across the, the end, so uh, we should be able to use this boring head to counterbore this. To begin with, I put uh, very small cuts on the boring head, but with practice I discovered I actually could take quite large cuts. Replacing the other clamp just to make sure that the work doesn't move when I start to counter bore. Take note that the clamping pieces are as far away from the clamping bolt as possible and the bolt is as close as possible to the work to maximize clamping force. So just putting on one of the many cuts which uh, were necessary in this operation by undoing the clamping screw, adjusting the radius and then retightening the clamping screw. This is an old style boring head which I picked up quite cheaply, quite different from the modern ones but it seems to work very well. 
So since this boring operation has been so successful, remember this is the first time I've used the boring head. Um, it's predictable. What I dial in is what I measure. I'm going to use the same setting here to just touch that, um, that uh, half inch hole and make sure that the two holes are truly concentric. And that will mean that um, the bolt that goes in there uh, will fit snugly on both diameters, which may be an advantage. It's time to make the bolt from a piece of um, simple mild steel, I think it's EM1A free cutting mild steel. As I'm roughing out I'm just using my scale to get the lengths approximately right. Later on I move to using a vernier caliper but even that isn't accurate enough and finally I have to remove a small amount to get the fit just right by trial and error. I'm using my parting tool here to create a decent undercut so that I've got somewhere for the threading tool to run into without crashing into the shoulder. And now it's time to screw cut the 3 8 UNC thread. Now bringing the diameters finally to size. The carefully placed chamfers here are not just for appearance, but will help with subsequent assembly. So fitting the other half of the assembly confirmed that the fit wasn't exactly right. Uh, this may look a little bit dangerous to you, threading on with the lathe, holding the casting in my hand like that. But actually, um, you see with my left hand there, I'm controlling the power to the motor and actually the torque is quite controllable. So this is probably safer than it looks. On my first trial assembly I could tell that the length of the bolt wasn't right so I determined the length of overhang and then I used the top slide to shave that amount off the length. I think you can see now that this is a much better fit. This is what I was aiming for. So it's time now to part off the bolt and clean up everything and assemble. This is my setup for slotting the screw head. So I've got a, an arbor in my, my lathe there holding a slitting saw and my vertical slide in position with my trusted record vice. 
I'm just using a feeler gauge there to get the edge of the work and then I'm going to clock across and uh, hit the center line. You may ask why am I not doing this in the milling machine and that's because I haven't got any stub arpers. I'm really just accumulating equipment for the milling machine and, and catching up really. You can see my slitting saw is not running concentrically. Um, I think it's the slitting saw itself, not the setup. Anyway, it didn't make any difference to the result. Still in its threaded mandrel, I'm just uh, facing up the screw now, ready for finishing, and I'm going to put a nice chamfer on there as well. Well, here's our finished uh, screw. I'm pleased with how that's come out. And uh, I'll just put it together and show you the fit. Just a little touch of uh, light oil as we put it together. So you can see that's a nice, a nice fit in there and uh, just below the surface as well just put a bit of support under the hinge there so that uh, this makes it a bit easier to tighten up the screw Great, let's go and try it on the lathe, see how it looks. Well, this is as far as we've got. You can see here that it's a nice smooth action and uh, there's no sloppiness there. Um, it's tight, both on the diameters and the faces here, so it's fairly rigid. And I've made it so this is just below the surface here. So next video, we will cut the slots for the bronze bearing supports here. And as I mentioned before, these will be interchangeable. So I'll be using these together with the clamping screws in this larger version of the standard model. And um, so as well as cutting those, we'll also machine uh, the outer edges at the same setting and uh, put, put in the adjusting screws. The other thing I need to work on is the design of this clamp here. There's quite a lot of material that needs to be removed. Uh, I need to think about the details of that and the clamping arrangement. So I hope you join me for the next video. See you next time.